the real behind the scenes dialogue that I had with Room Service Radio, I was like, man, it's it's you know, it's a lot on the player right now. You feel me? And um, I need to take a break to get my my mental space back. You feel yes, me? I, I didn't dealt with a lot of artists, a lot of business owners, um, a few of those <clears throat> um, community leaders. You know. Uh, one of them, man, shout out to Twix, man. He was a part of that, you know, running this campaign, man, for North Las Vegas Mary. Came through, slid up on your boy. But mm-hmm. I dealt with a lot of energy, um, and I was doing shows, man, every Thursday and Friday. Y'all know it was 12 to 2, you know what I mean? And, um, man, when you talk about, you know, doing uh, four episodes a week, two days a week, um, and, and dealing with all the, the messages and, um, dealing with talking to people and some people just they not um a respecter of your value you know what i mean so if i say hey an interview costs this much with me you know it's like oh uh, and uh, you know it's all kind of you know backlash or whatever the case may be then you got the whispers of other people you know uh is it worth they don't think you should be in and then, you know, you got the whispers of other people like, you know, well, what you getting for? Man, listen, I'm literally valuable. And if you can't understand that, that's on you and that's your loss. Mm-hmm. Because in reality, I am known as and I believe in myself as one of the best interviewers doing this across the board. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't just talking about Vegas. Talking about in general, you could put me up there with the Vlads, you could put me up there with the Say Cheese, you could put me up there with the Dirty Glove Bastards, you could put me up there. You know what I mean? So in reality, like, I'm growing and I'm building, you know what I'm saying? I'm capitalizing too, you dig? So when it comes to, like, uh, the financial part of it, man, uh, it costs to run an empire. Right. It costs for something as quote-unquote simple as a podcast, a, a radio show, right? Um, you got to invest in yourself. You feel me? Um, and then the branch or, or the brand or, or the um, the media channel you're under, it costs them too. Yeah. Room service radio don't look this good <laughs> if they ain't investing it. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This wouldn't be the template to run with when you're trying to build your own if it didn't look like it looked, you know what I'm saying? And so everybody understands that. And for the people who don't, man, I had to shake them off. You feel me? I had to, uh, and, it, and it took me some time to get my mental space back and for me to also remember my value. You know what I mean? And now I'm in a place where, hey, this is, this is my actual, um, this is my speech. You know what I mean? This is my soapbox. Look, I'm not going to interview anyone unless they actually have the rate that I'm asking for. And I'm thankful that I'm able to do that. Because at a point in time, I was paying essentially for their interview. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? And I have a platform um, where it's worth it, right? So this is a promotional uh, marketing tool, right? Mm-hmm. So you're gonna get yourself um, some some marketing materials, some marketing right. tools with this interview, <clears throat> right? Um, second, uh, people that you don't even know are watching the show, and they'll potentially be a listener. Mm-hmm. And now it's up to you to make them a follower or a fan. You know what I mean? I got my fan, and I'm growing more. Right. So when we do the show, I probably will get some of my special guest fans. I probably will get some of my special guest followers to follow me. Right. But we're, we, we know that you're on the show because I am a brand. I see what I see Jones as a brand. Room service radio is a brand. You know what I mean? And we know that it's worth it. Whatever I'm asking for, it's worth it. And it's not outlandish. It's worth it. You know what I'm saying? This clear channel we're on, this amazing brand that I'm under, uh, the people that 
actually own this brand. Amazing people behind the scenes, man. Um, I'll speak on it, man. Love uh, Sade, an amazing woman in business, a black woman in business. You feel me? And really knocking it down like a like a like a bowling pin. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's like I never left. Took a break. I took a break to get my bearings up under me and to remember and to realize and to recognize who I am. And yes, I did go to another place that was offered to me a position to help them do something. And I ended up creating something for them. You know what I mean? And it just didn't work out. <clears throat> I'm not going to go into all of that. That's messy. But the point being is it didn't work out and that's okay. And more power to the other place I went to. But even if I stayed there and everything went well, I was still coming back to room service radio in the fall, but I was just trying to figure out how to do it. For everybody asking, I wasn't trying to tell everybody how I wasn't trying to tell everybody when I'm learning how to keep certain stuff to myself, man. That's how you got to do a lot of stuff. Everybody don't need to know. Matter of fact, People just want to know so they can see your next move. Mm -hmm. They're not even rooting for you. You know, yeah. they don't even right. want to give you advice. You feel me? I can, I can probably name on one hand how many people really give me advice. How many people really want to see me win? How many people really want to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. help, a, help a brother out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just talking about the people that I know in general. Yeah, like the right? Other people... They just trying to be 10 steps ahead of me. You know what I mean? And I'm going to keep it real. I'm not, listen, I'm not in competition with none of y'all. You know I'm in competition with? Me. How can I be better than Icy Jones? How can I be better than Hotsey with Icy Jones? What can I do different to make it go up a notch or two or 10? You feel me? How can I make Hotsey with Icy Jones a global platform? How can I get better special guests. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. How can I grow my numbers? You know what I mean? Um, how can I be one of the top platforms in the city? And then from the city, you go national. Let's, let's say from the city, regional, then regional to national, then national to international, then international to global. How do I do that? You got to take time with yourself and God, bro. Your inner being is, you got to, right? So I did that, and this is where I'm at right now. You feel me? Um, room service radio, amazing. Um, I don't feel like I was going to go anywhere else. Now, once we negotiated and figured out what we doing, which was a simple phone call, which I was going to make regardless, boom, this is where we at. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate everybody who offered me another spot or, you know, felt like I was in limbo, like, you know, and that's cool. But even the people who were asking me, do I need another space? I wasn't even going to tell them what was going on. And I'm learning, bro. Keep it to yourself, brother. For real. And energy is real. Which means if you tell someone who don't have your best interest at heart, it could mess up the chakras, bro. Yeah, real, real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It can mess up that chi, man. It can mess it up, man, in the, in the universe, bro. Now, I'm going to keep it real, though. God, whatever is for you is for you, right? So that means God going to get it to you, but you also got lessons to learn if God is telling you to do something you don't do it. If God is telling you to keep it quiet and keep it to yourself, and this is the, the time where you need to learn how to do that, not a season, a time to do it forever, stop telling everybody everything, then you may get tripped up. Things may not work out, and you got to learn that lesson until you do you know what he told you to do until you walk those steps that he told you to walk. So I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with y'all. I'm very thankful for every person that has actually seen the value in Icy Jones and Hot Seat with Icy Jones. Very thankful for every person who has streamed my music, who has streamed my music videos, who has bought a ticket to my concerts. Very thankful for every person who has bought merchandise very thankful to every person that watches my show. You know what I mean? Um, even when it looked a little different and I was doing something different, people still 
supported. People still got interviews. <clears throat> People still seen the value, seen the worth. And what I mean by that is they paid the rate that I asked for. You know what I'm saying? And that's just it, man. Period. So, as we move forward, man, I want y'all to know I'm valuable. I'm worth something. And if you cannot pay the rate that I'm asking for, it's okay. I'm not mad at you. I don't feel no type of way. And I got about 10 to 15 other shows and, and, and <laughs> people you can go reach out to and be on their show. I promise you I do. And um, if you want to do a promotional run for whatever project you got, um, whatever item you have, uh, whatever you got going on, if you want to promote and market it to a larger platform than just the homies than just your neighborhood, you can definitely get at me and I'll give you the list of all the people I know that do shows, podcasts, radio shows. Your music on, on air. You know what I mean? I really know what I'm talking about. So we can do uh, consultations. Um, we can do where I'm, I consult you and I help you get further than where you at right now. You know what I mean? You don't just come on High School Icy Jones and think that's it. I wouldn't even tell you that. I'm just one of the pieces of the puzzle. You know what I mean? So shout out to everybody doing their thing. Everybody that's doing a podcast, radio show. Um, everybody that's doing interviews. Whatever it is, man, shout out to y'all because we make a huge broadcast system. And that broadcasting system is Vegas projecting to the world. I got viewers that the next podcast don't have. You know what I mean? I got music that the next DJ or radio show don't have. And in order for us to grow, we got to connect each other. I ain't got to work with you to connect with you. Make, make sense? All right. Now I'm off my soapbox, man. Let's get into it, man. A person who re has respect. You feel me? A person who um, has value. A person who shows me respect, shows me value, and vice versa, man. A, a, a Vegas native. You dig what I'm saying? Um, really putting on for his section. You feel, you feel me? me? Doing his thing right now, man. Got a brand popping. You know what I mean? I want to introduce the son, man. And I want to bring to the table for many, man. We got Von Loke in the building, the man. Boy, Von Loke, man. Here with I see Jones. You know what's going on, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, man. Already, man. It's love. And this is my first interview back after break. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? Um, back like you never left. Honestly, you know, we're talking about, you know, we in October now. You mm -hmm. dig? Uh, we in the fall. Yes, sir. And I did what I said I'm going to do. All right? Now, when we talk about this time frame we in, you feel me? Mm -hmm. How you feeling about the last quarter? You know what I mean? October, November, December, man. The last quarter of 2022, man. How you feeling? As far as what? Everything, okay. man. Uh, from From your music. Um, to just you as a person, you know, what you about to do, how you feeling for the last quarter? Well, so I always try to finish the last quarter strong. You feel me? Because like that's how you gonna make your impact for the new year. That's what you gonna see. Well, like I say, like you setting that seed for the new year type shit. So me personally, that's why no bomb I just dropped the drink Lucas. You feel me? I got the Cushman lifestyle coming, you feel me? I'm just gonna get more in depth of my lifestyle and show the people what the Cushman lifestyle is really about. You feel mm. me? I got my artist coming. I got a little artist that I'm working with. Mm. So you feel me? I got him in the motherfucking booth going crazy. And just try to, you feel me? Because I've been doing it for a minute. Okay. So I'm just trying to, like, I didn't do it the wrong way and the right way. <laughs> so I know, you feel me? Like, Haven't we all? Put, like, like, put the knowledge that I know yep. into somebody else. Embedded. Do me a favor. Uh, push your mic so towards me so that way when you're talking to me, okay. you're right in there. And, and push it towards your right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There you go. Here we go, here we go. Okay. So, what's the name of your artist? Uh, what's his name? Key Smooth. Key Smooth. Yes, sir. Okay. Any music out there from him? Not yet. Not yet. But he okay. Got that first single come just trying to make everything come Get out. Get it right. right. Yeah. Okay, Any features with you yet? That he got a feature with you? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But we okay. got some for me in the works for sure. For sure. Okay. So, 
Um, I don't mean to do this to you, right? But bro said, I had to get my chain before I came. <laughs> Hold up that piece, man. That's no, that Kush real, thing, man. man. Kush you man feel thing, me? Man. That thing shiny, man. Look, I got a little uh, a little yeah, gift from my mama. Down, you feel? I got a little down. gift from my mama on Father's Day, man. She knows she created a king. You feel me? So no, I'm thankful for, for that, That's man. That's what's up, man. Shout um, out to mom. Who, who, who clothes you got on right now? What's this? Oh, All this day, the cookies. This the cookies. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I fuck with cookies heavy. Remember they had uh slid in the DM a while back when they noticed, you feel me? I was mm. going crazy on their shit. Okay. So yeah, every time you feel me, I post some music or whatever, they'll repost my shit and show love. You feel me? That's been a real big part of the whole drink Lucas movement because I see mm -hmm. like a lot of the cookie people came from there. Yeah. One hundred. So, yeah, now cookie is a brand, mm -hmm. but it's also a strength. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. Um and so, which one was it—the brand or the strand, or both? Which one you was you was promoting more? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, see, because I just started wearing cookie because okay. what nobody wearing. Okay. Then it just went crazy. Crazy. It, I, mean, I was already on it. So it was brand. Yeah. So it was really the brand. Yeah. But you know, Cushman, Cushman. Yeah. Was coming through with them cookies. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. But it was more the brand that you okay. know, like me trying to connect with them. One hundred, man. One hundred. So, uh, for those who don't know. You know, Von Lo, he a rapper, he a spitter, he an artist, you feel me? Mm -hmm. From the west side of Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Uh, Drank Lucas just dropped. Yes, sir. Right? What type of response you getting, man? How they, how they feeling it, man? Man, so I got a real good response from uh, to the Drank Lucas, because this was really my first album leaning more towards the West Coast beats. Okay. So I just like noticed like more of the fan base that I was starting to get more. That's where it was coming from. West Coast. Yeah, yeah, from the West Coast. So I got in there. It's a little song on there called Snicker. I didn't even think they was going to fuck with it like that. Everybody was like, yeah, I fuck with that Snicker. I fuck with that Snicker. Word. Yeah, yeah, type shit. So yeah, I got a real good response from me. A lot of people was like, it's a little too thugged out. Uh -huh. So, you know, next time I know I need to balance it a little more. Okay. You feel me? But yeah, it uh -huh. was a good first round. What is... Snicker, uh, well, uh, that's a, a single on the drink, Lucas. That I'm about to. Is it a? Is it a? You got a chorus for me or something? Can I? What, what's a little snippet you could you could tell me right now? Like, give me a bomb bar. Or come off like bomb. Little mama, I hit thicker than the Snicker. Get the glove, last box. Cause I can't wait to hit her. Hold on, yo, do the weenie. Nah, he ain't no hitter. He in the field sometimes like a kicker. <laughs> so, yeah. Ah, oh, thicker than the Snicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try right. to, you feel me? I tried to, uh, you feel me, make a little club vibe, you feel me? Yeah. One for the bitches type shit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. For the excuse women. Me. Cut excuse it out. Me, excuse me, for the women. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> excuse me, I just talk like that. I just talk like that. I just look like this. All right. So, they all know, they gonna know today. You know, you a gangster. You feel me? When you say people like, oh, it's a little too thugged out. Yes. Sir. Oh, you ain't know? <laughs> you yeah, ain't yeah. following the catalog Man, it be a lot of people that don't follow the catalog and Okay they, And then when they hear the music They're like, oh man so that's, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good, it's good, it's good I didn't know he was coming like that though Yeah, like, yeah man yeah. That's, You feel me, it's that Drake Lucas But like with the Cushman lifestyle mm -hmm. That's when I lean more towards The like trapping part and the money yeah. part you Yeah, know what I mean? yeah Which is good Because that shows a little bit of growth, man mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I ain't gonna lie I done seen a lot of a lot of baby blue rags in your bitch. <laughs> yeah, I done man. seen a lot of sixes in the bitch. <laughs> right? Yeah, hell yeah. But man. you you know, we represent our section. For sure, for sure, to the fullest. You know what I mean? Each mm -hmm. artist, you know, they represent their section. Mm -hmm. It's really not like I've never seen <laughs> I've never seen an actor represent their section. <laughs> right? <laughs> like I don't even know if I've seen a boxer. Represent they section, right? Oh. Uh, NBA player, NFL player, not like artists can, mm -hmm. right? You may see them do something with their hands or something, right? Mm -hmm. But look, I told you to put your phone on vibrate. Then <laughs> mine ain't you know vibrate. That's my bad. So boom. Why is it important to represent your section as a rapper? Simply because to the people. I mean, it's just how I look at it. If your section not behind you, why they going to be behind you? Mm-hmm. Like, Talk to them, Vaughn. Just like, you feel me? If your own motherfucking homies is not 
like supporting your shit. Like it's not gonna make the next motherfucker support. Like it's like that push gotta come from somewhere. You feel me? Then at yeah. the same time, yeah. that shit is just in us and not on us. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like you feel mm-hmm. that's just the first thing come off when motherfuckers get the rap it. You Ain't no me? faking. It's just what it is. Shit. Right. But then at the same time, like you said, it also comes with a whole lot of growth. You feel yeah. me? You also got to grow with your music. Like, yeah. everybody not going to want to hear that shoot them up, bang, bang right. all the time. Right. You can't make every single song for your homies. No, you shit. can't. So, okay. even like I said, it's just all about balance. But it's funny, man, because Rich Rollin is all over the world. Man, you know from I mean? here, it's crazy. Like, why are we having people tapping in from New York 60s, they mm-hmm. down in Miami, down mm-hmm. south. Like, that shit is everywhere. It's yes. crazy. Yes. And, and and I'll be having to ask them, like, what, y'all got real 60s out there? <laughs> they be like, yeah, hell yeah, man. We, yeah. Like, he said okay. real ones. Yes, bro. I'll be to Look, That's when I was crazy. in the streets, man, uh, I moved to uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah. And they was out there. Yeah. Um, Dick. Where did I first run across them? Yeah, uh, when I was on tour with the landlord, when he was doing his shows, mm-hmm. and we ran across, I think we was in, Memphis, it was the Memphis six O's. Mm. And I was like, damn, these six O's are all yes. through here. Same shape. Same shape. <laughs> Probably bang even harder. Right. This shit is you crazy. Me? But um, you know, I don't want to get into too much of politics. Uh I rarely see the baby blue rag though. You know what I mean? I see the blue rag, I see the royal blue rag. You know what I mean? But Vegas is one of the ones I've really seen and where I came up where it was a baby blue bandana. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, I just take it back to, I just say, like, when the big homies probably got quoted or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, because the Cali 6 so they got the dark blue. Mm-hmm. And they, when the big homies started our shit out here, they just said, I was going to be baby blue. Baby blue. Yeah, we ain't going to be like it. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So, But it's still homies out here that still be wearing the dark blue. Yeah. But it's just, you feel me, it's different hood politics in different state. Like, that's the Donna's color. You feel me? Yeah. yeah so. But like I said, like like they call that Nipsey blue, like the royal blue is like the Nipsey blue, like yeah. I seen, and I was like, okay. But again, that's hood politics. We don't want to go too deep, yeah, right? Go deep, yeah. Now, yeah. uh, you said tour, yeah, with the landlord, yeah. Okay, how did you link up with landlord, and how was tour with the landlord? Two questions in one. Um, should I first link up with landlord? I think I met him in like the eighth grade. Mm. But that's when we first you feel me met, mm-hmm. and then his cousin, uh, Cuddy was my homie. Okay, so you feel me? I was rocking with him, and then like, you know, uh, it's later on in life he seen me doing the thing with the rapping, and then um, I don't remember exactly how I ended up going out of town, but um, I think I was just going you feel me just to just to support him. Okay, and then uh, and then yeah, we just started. And we just started bailing after that. And then the first one where, like, the real tour was when um, Starlito had brought him on, like, uh, it was probably like an eight-city tour. I know we went to Nashville, like, three like three cities in Houston, went to Alabama, um, Chattanooga. And then that was when, like, like I seen, like, this shit is real. You, mm-hmm. know, you can really get out here and do this music mm-hmm. shit if you really put your all into it, mm-hmm. you feel me? Because, like, Okay, let's say if if uh, the landlord want to go to a city, he going to go to that city first, mm-hmm. and then he going to see what the market is like. Right. He going to go out there just on the trip first. So it's just like, he really... Talk to me, me now. I'm listening, man. Yeah, like he really gave a nigga the blueprint to this shit. You feel me? Right, right. So, so yeah, that shit. Yeah, that shit is lovely. That shit. Yeah, that shit was lovely, man. So that's your, that's your answer. It was It was lovely. Yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> the tour that shit was crazy. That shit was more than lovely. That shit was crazy, boy. We that shit was crazy. I remember getting so motherfucking drunk, I could not stop throwing. I'm hanging out the motherfucking window. Not Kush man getting drunk, man. Cause I be on that lane, man. And nigga got full of that alcohol. We had the waffle whole house. different thing, man. That shit is crazy. But and then it's like just the love down south. You put me at the landlord, be getting to it's just like. We hit the mall, everybody know him, you feel me? It's just like a whole it's different fun. vibe. It's just yeah, it's real. Yeah. It's shit real. So uh you are one of those cats, right, who was blessed 
to really be with landlord on a daily basis. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, get on and go on tour with bro. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. That was like. Because that ain't for everybody. Nah, nah. And you feel me? Yeah, I appreciate it to the max for even just, like, this motherfucking bringing me so I could see all of this shit. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like, see how it go. You feel me? See the fucking life on the Sprinter. We on the Sprinter two weeks at a whole motherfucking time. You feel me? Hotel to hotel. I still hate San Antonio. They kicked me out the hotel. Mm. I ain't known that you can't smoke in the parking lot. Mm. In the parking lot. I ain't fucking with that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I ain't fucking with San Antonio. Okay. But, but yeah, but he really showed a nigga the blueprint to that shit, though. Some people may hate this question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Mm-hmm. What makes you special or different, right, that he took you or, or chose you? You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> to be real, he knew. You feel me? He knew how hard that I was trying to go with this rap shit. He knew how bad I wanted this rap shit, so he wanted yeah. me to see this shit. Good. That's good. You feel me? He was just on some real nigga shit. You afforded yourself to go? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You could afford it. Yeah, hell yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? And then it'll be, like, sometimes that shit'll be like, hey, yeah, man, they call me for a show. We got to leave tomorrow. If you can't come, it's cool. I'm, yeah. I'm on it. I'm gone. That's gone. Whatever I got to do to make it happen. Yeah, because yeah, you feel me? It's like, it's like, some shit you just need to see, yep. and then I could get back and put that into my game. Yes. You feel me? Like, now I could do this with my homies. Type shit, yes. You feel me? Because you know, he gave me the game and told me to run with it. Yes. Trapper Mandel. Mm-hmm. You got a, a, a single with him. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. How was that? That was, uh, yeah, that was a good experience. I met Trap through uh, the land, mm-hmm. through uh, the landlord, and then me mm-hmm. and Trap got real close. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got real close, so that's how the song came about. Mm-hmm. But me just happened to be out here on some cool shit, and we just ended up doing the song. And then, um, yeah, it's just like the whole scene of hanging out with him up in Memphis and fucking Nashville. I think we was up in Alabama. It was asking us about him in the mall. She's mm-hmm. like, y'all, y'all gonna be at the show later? But and then that's because they had recognized the landlord. landlord. Yeah. Now, you just told me something. You said, I link with. Trapper Mandel, and we got to know each other. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just the instant, let me get a verse. Nah, the I knew Trap at least two years before we two did this song. Two years. At least two years before we did this song. I ain't even, you feel me? Cause Talk to him, man. Yeah, because it wasn't on no music. Let him know shit. how important just, that is to have a relationship, yeah, it's though. Like you, it's just like when you first meet a motherfucker, you don't want to just come off, oh, yeah, man, let me get a fish if you want to. Had that relationship with him first, so, so like everything is for show, for show, genuine. Yeah, because a motherfucker like do you a song and never even think about it. Nope. Like shit, like the song that we did still on his page to this day because that's yeah. my brother. You feel yeah, me? that's just not you feel me? Just no feature. Nope. It ain't just landlord, homie. Yes, exactly. Feel me? And, and landlord put me in that, position, in that position to make sure you feel me. But if I go to Nashville. Right now, without landlord, he gonna make them calls and make sure I'm with everybody I need to be with. You make right. sure a nigga got everything straight. You yeah, me? but that's just the type of nigga he is. You feel me? Tell me about this Cushman <laughs> lifestyle, man. This Cushman music idea, man. Tell me about it, man. How did it come about, man? Cushman music came about all from me. Like you know what? There's too much fake shit going on. Mm-hmm. I need to rap what I'm living about. Mm-hmm. And then you feel me? This is my job. This Cushman music. Everybody had a little, uh, little motherfucking brands and everything they was doing. Like, this is what I do to weed. So it's gonna be Cushman music. Mm-hmm. So that's why I did Cushman music one, two, and I think I stopped at three point five. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah, I had got all the way right there. And then that was the trial and tribulation I told you about. Of me learning what to do, doing shit wrong. Me all of the above. So when I come with Cushman Fo, mm-hmm. I know how to go about it. <laughs> Cushman Fo coming? Cushman Fo coming right after Cushman Lifestyle. I just gotta show him this lifestyle, how I get wild. It's Cushman, you feel me? <laughs> so Drink Drink Lucas is out right now. Yes, sir. Drink Lucas out right now on all platforms, download it on Spotify, Apple Music, all that. How many tracks on it? Twelve. Twelve. It's a body of music, man. It's a body of work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was working on uh, 
Yeah, I was working on that for a minute because I had my first artist, uh, my homie Draco. He on there. Okay. But uh, shit, unfortunately, he had to go do a little time. Man. So you feel me? When he come home, you feel me? Gonna be back at it like you feel me? Yeah, like no, you never left. So, but. How much time you got? I'm not sure. I'm okay. not sure. I'm not sure. Bro. Okay. I'm not sure. I think it's a couple years or something like. Something like. Be yeah, back. Something like. Okay. Now, um, how do you feel about. Uh, the hip hop support system in Vegas. Do you feel like Vegas supports you, or how do you feel about the system of support mm-hmm. in Vegas for you? It's like for me, the support is there. Okay. Like, like every time I drop some, I always get love from the city. Okay. You know what I'm saying? From East Sections. I didn't. I had my little run in this in the past. There's a couple motherfuckers that still don't fuck with me from you for me, nigga. Past shit. That's why I stay away from the diss tracks now. Okay. But the Vegas support system is there. I just feel that the artists need to, like, let me see, they need to link more and, like, function more with the people doing the podcast, the motherfucking DJs. You feel me? Like, you can't yeah. Yeah. be mad or scared at a motherfucker. I said, they want you to give them a couple bucks to play their music. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, no, 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 I ain't got to pay them to play my music. This is my city. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to invest in yourself. Like, mm-hmm. you got to, he up here doing a job. You, that's going to, i just be looking at this shit the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And it's low key kind of like, it's low key kind of biased because, okay. because of all the game banging. And that make it hard for, for like, for all of the podcasts and the blogs that's not into, you know, <laughs> like nigga, they the not, streets. yeah, yeah, like nigga, they not into no street life. So they gonna invite this person. They gonna invite this person. They don't know nothing about what y'all got yeah. going on. Yeah, excuse me, like motherfuckers just need to learn to leave that shit out. You feel me? Y'all need to be in the same place and be able to coexist in the same place without drama. Exactly. You feel me? That's the only way to shit. That's how the support system gonna be cool because. Because if a motherfucker see a certain person on the flyer, they going to feel like, oh, yeah, he fuck with him. He don't fuck with me. Blase, yeah. blase. Blah, yes. blah. When, nigga, that's not the case. Yes. Nigga, they just trying to put Vegas music yeah. on. It happens with my platform. I see what I see, John. Yep. You know what I mean? And I'm not affiliated with, like, no gang, mm-hmm. uh, no clicks and nothing. Do I know people? Yes. Right? Um, do I hang around people? Yeah. But am I affiliated? No. You feel me? I've been out the streets since 2010, 2009. You feel me? So, like, I just need people to reach out to me and let me know they want to be on a platform and let me know that they see my value. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And we, we got to sit down. Hell yeah, because you got to appreciate the motherfucker that's putting this shit together for the artists. You feel me? We ain't, we ain't had this before. Hell nah. And when I first... Started trying to like at Cushman Music One, mm. it was none of this, none of this. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. Literally, no type of podcast, no type of blog, nobody trying to put on Vegas music and nothing like that. There you go. So that's why I'm like, for the motherfuckers that's just starting now, they need to really take advantage <laughs> of this shit because it was none of this shit when I first put out my first CD and my first video. You yeah, feel me? it wasn't nobody. That's going to get on their platform. Oh, yes, yeah, such and such just dropped a video. Go check that out. You could yeah. tap in 10, 20 plus people in Vegas to push your shit. Yep. Like, that shit wasn't there. That's why motherfuckers need to take it. Man, sure that's why I hit you up. You feel me? 100, man. That's 1,000. Real, for real, for real. Uh, talk to me about this drink real quick, man. What's up with this drink, man? Like, <laughs> <laughs> when did you first sip your first drink, man? Man. Me and my cousin Kendall stole my Auntie Charlene shit. Wow. I think it had to be. She didn't call bronchitis in y'all. <laughs> yeah, I was in the ninth, so he had to be in the eighth. <laughs> she still got a cough today because y'all done took her syrup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was around the time Lil Wayne dropped that. Uh, it's me and my drink. Okay. And that's what we was like, man. We got to try. We was young. <laughs> but then that shit, you put me, nigga left that shit alone for a long, long, long time. Okay. Like, yeah, it's, nigga ain't sipping school and I ain't really start sipping. Grown, grown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now what, man? Is it is it a, a brand and a lifestyle, or you you sip because this is what you do? It's all three. Okay. All three. It's a brand for sure because I made it a brand with my yeah. drink, Lucas. You yeah. Feel me? I got a whole little, you 
feel me? A whole little motherfucking facade with it. And I got me a little character all of the above. Yeah. You feel me? It's definitely a lifestyle because the drink is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Motherfuckers just be sipping just to look cool. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's niggas that really, you feel me? Like, that's where they get it fucked up because the drink, like, because the only motherfuckers used to sip used to be the fucking pimps, the motherfucking players, all the rich motherfuckers. Like, mm -hmm. you no, know, it's like the motherfucking ballers. It's like a. It's like an expensive bottle of motherfucking mm -hmm. uh fucking champagne or something. Mm -hmm. But that shit different now, the shit flowing around so much, but at the same time the price then went up so mm -hmm. much. So you feel me? That's that's really the shit is just like you feel me, you celebrating your accomplishments type mm -hmm. shit. You mm -hmm. feel me? That's why I said. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Nigga doing good. You mm -hmm. feel me? Nigga ain't out here hurting. Mm -hmm. So you feel me, I can sip. Man, cause I'm like, I know it's what the uh damn, what was his name? I think it was Zero, mm -hmm. and somebody said, uh, "What the fuck you say?" As the cuss said, "I do what I do, so I feel like I get throwed." Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an old yeah. motherfucking sipping song. I'm yeah, mama, nigga. yeah, I know that's like handle my business, so you know, I can get thrown. Bun B, Pimp C, it's probably yes, like sir. a screwed up like, chorus, right? It's a whole culture. You feel me? That's yeah. where it came from. I mean that song though. Yes, throw, like it's like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, but it is expensive. Man, it's expensive as shit. That's you why, feel? nigga, you sip it. <laughs> you, you like, that shit is don't, expensive don't. as shit. But see, this the thing. Like, Von Loke ain't no bum. No, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm having his way right now. You right? So, yeah. I'm not saying that you're addicted to nothing like that, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, if you took a month off and invested every time you would pay for it, a bottle of drink, put it into your music. See within thirty days, dude. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be that's I'm a, deep. I'm gonna challenge, challenge you right there. there I'm gonna challenge you right there. And then let me know if you do it, right? Because after that, bro, I guarantee you, you'll be on so many other platforms. Because I know how much drink costs. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? I don't drink, but I got partners and and, and homies. You know, shout out to Hitman. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, bro, it's not cheap, and yeah, so that no. means you can't be a sipper. And be broke. Fact. Because you be spending your money on sipping. Hell yeah. You're you just going to be broke until you get your yeah. next money. So you you got to be a hustler. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just your thing. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's your way to celebrate. Like buying uh, Sean Don. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, old school uh, Chris Dowell or whatever they yeah. sipping now. 1942. You yeah, feel yeah. me? And motherfuckers go pop a bottle. We pop a facts. seal. Right. Straight right, up. and you don't even pop bottles. You feel me? You pop yeah, a seal. Nah, you up. can't do both, really. Yeah, you know what I mean? Nah, that shit, that shit ain't. Right. Like shit. So I get it, but I'm like, bro, like, try it. Hell yeah, I thirty need days, it bro. bro. And, thirty but, day, bro. but take the money though and put it into your music career mm -hmm. and see what happens after that. You feel me? You might have enough money to be on, you know, Vlad or something. You know, like <laughs> shit, now for real, for real. <laughs> Because that's what a lot of motherfuckers don't understand. Like, you could put that song out, but it's a whole nother workload yes. behind it. Yes. It's a whole nother yes. workload behind it's it. Not it's just... so much money you got to spend on marketing yeah. just to put yourself in front of people. You yes. feel me? You, know, you got to. Yeah. Outside of Vegas. You feel Definitely me? outside of and Vegas. You have a Nashville or, let's say, a Tennessee fan base now. Tell your shit. Nigga fucking with uh the fucking with the landlord, he done fucked around, got a nigga in Nashville, nigga. We down through deep in Alabama. It's real. It's Atlanta real too? Love in Alabama. Hell yeah. Uh, but it's deep in Alabama and all through Texas for sure, for sure. So you got Texas, Alabama, and Tennessee mm. and Las Vegas. Hell yeah, and we got Atlanta, uh damn, what's that love? Making. Making, Making Georgia. Georgia. Making Georgia. That's listen to me. I can personally help you go on tour. Type shit. Seriously. Hell yeah. We'll we'll dig deep into your fan base mm -hmm. on um online and I'll show you how to grab them. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Show you how to get the venue. Show you how to pre-sell the tickets. Show mm -hmm. you how the money before you drop. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Show you how to do your merch sales. You feel me? Because you, you got a brand now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'll show you how to do it. But that's what I do. You feel me? Being a Christian hip-hop artist, man, God afforded me, you know, the chance, bro, to yes, do it for myself. Mm -hmm. Personally, um, all the things I did as a Christian hip-hop artist, I never did 
when I was just a hip hop artist. Back. This for me though. Yeah. You know, other people got other stories. Mm-hmm. My story is I became a gospel rapper. And God did everything he said he would do for me. Mm-hmm. And I was blown away. That's what's up. That's what's up. One day I woke up and God was like, This ain't what I told you to do. <laughs> 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 this ain't the life I you created that for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, bros, I got a lot of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, a lot of intake. And I love to help my other, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. My counterparts, my my people. Yeah, yeah. Do it. You know what I'm saying? Cause guess what? Fine, you're not in the streets, man, killing people, bro. Nah, hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't on the news. Hell no. Nah. You're not FBI's most wanted. Hell no. Nah. It ain't gonna be. Right? <laughs> nigga, you, ain't you, you, you ain't running up in houses. Hell no. Nah, hell no, nah, nigga. No home invasions. Hell no, nah, nigga. Passed all that crazy shit in his life. You feel me? Nigga didn't made it through the cracks, and I'm here now. I'm stay here. I mean, do what I gotta do to stay here. That's what my and if I can help you stay here with the business mindset, bro, I want to do that because it ain't nothing but a a way from you going back to what you used to do because something happened and you got to get that bread. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We hope not, but the point being is, I help my cats to stay on that path because they're not a danger to our environment no more. Mm -hmm. Facts. Am I making sense to you? Yes, sir. Man, we on High Seat with Icy Jones, man. Right here on Room Service Radio. You know yes, what it sir. is, man. We got a couple songs we want to play, man. Before we do that, man, I want to know um, what's coming up, man, in the future for you. With this, with this, what's the next mixtape we got coming? Next mixtape. Ah, excuse me. On the next mixtape we got is Kush Man Lifestyle. Okay. You feel me? It's been a drop in the fourth quarter. I'm going to drop it towards the end of the year type shit. Okay. We got some at least three, four videos coming before and after that, and a whole bunch of vlogs that's gonna get real in depth in the Cushman lifestyle. Okay, okay, yes, I see you. Content, yes, sir. Content, a lot of content. Keep it busting. Some some good music, yes, sir. And some video, and some visuals, definitely busting. Okay, for sure. Right now, man, we have a uh, drop of foe mm-hmm. and uh, what's drink, Lucas? Yes, sir. All right, so we're going to play those videos back-to-back for the people. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into it. I want you to introduce what I just said, man. Introduce it to the people, man. Tell them your name. Tell them the songs, man. Tell them where to find it at. It's your boy, Von Loco. You know what I said? Drink Lucas coming through. Drink Lucas, the motherfucking mixtape is out now. We finna bless y'all with that drop of foe. And we got Drink Lucas, the song. So we coming right now. Let's go. I see what I see. Jones, Let's baby. Get it. Brian Loke in the building. Let's get it. Room service ready, y'all. Let's go. We have to make it. me a four when I drop me a six. In traffic with something pretty and thick. Live mama bad as a two-year-old kid. Not from New York. I don't like the Knicks. Turn on my trap. Yeah, bring that bag. Cop you a pound. Cop you a half. Heard you was robbing. I can't go outside. I stay strapped like American dad. Hit the pounds. I lose that weight like a diet pill. Like a diet pill. Yeah. When it come to lean, I sell more syrup than NyQuil. If I take a L, I take your life. You know that pistol get your mind right. Ten bands on your head, that's a green light. I'm so high, I stopped at a green light. I'ma get rich, it's gonna take some time. I'm sipping on lean while my bitch sip wine. I hit the bitch, but she not mine. All these hoes tell, like Priceline. Give me a pound and I break this shit down. Cases of green coming from H Town. Heard little dude ass was talking down. Stand up guy, till we knock it down. Ever since I started balling, I gotta move this. Gotta move this. Okay, young Mike Tyson, nigga, my diamonds hitting this. Yes. Okay, the life that I'm living, I couldn't imagine Bad. Fucking bitches that be in beauty pageants Send you a pack, send me the Addy Five different bitches, they calling me daddy Y'all ain't really trying to get that get back Y'all out here friends Got a new girl, she's so thick, she put on a shirt Titties pop buttons All of this money, I can't stop stunting Walking around with ten bands like it's nothing New effing and I can't wait to bust it Sit back wood, yeah I be puffing Spinning them racks and I did it at Gucci But good luck, I'ma rub on a booty I really be sipping, pulling in a smoothie While we keep guns, I call of duty Niggas keep dissing, they say they gon' shoot me I'm on their head like a dude, I get koofy No Disney Channel, these niggas is goofy No Disney Channel, these niggas is goofy 
me. Drop me a four when I drop me a six. In traffic with something pretty and thick. Look, mama bad as a two year old kid. Not from New York, I don't like the Knicks. Drag Luke. Drag Luke. Hey, Kush Red, Kush Red. I'm drink Lucas and I sip walk. My pockets got beat up cause they got them knots. Wipe down your block, yeah, I brought out a mop. Turn on the news cause I put them on Fox. Bad little baby trying to give me that top. She like, Bon Loke, how you get all that guap? I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. Like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. I'm drink Lucas and I sip walk. My pockets got beat up cause they got them knots. Run down your block, yeah, I brought out a mop. Turn on the news cause I put them on Fox. Bad little baby trying to give me that top. She like, Bon Loke, how you get all that guap? I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. 10K one week, all of my spots. Put a honey bun on all of my Glocks. I share the plug with the whole team. Hitting my goals like a soccer team. Good walk car, got a nigga feeling lazy. Don't get got the little bitch going crazy. She asked me how I get guap. On the daily trap house, jumping like a candy lady. Design on my slides, I don't wear Crocs. Don't try to rob, you get your ass pop. Don't go wrong, nigga, thinking we soft. Keep a stick on me like I'm playing golf. Got an old bitch and she cook out of crock pots. Got a young bitch and she always on TikTok. But they both go hard, giving that sloppy top. But they both go hard, giving that sloppy top. Your partner was super tough. Yeah, now that little nigga dead. Yeah, I'll be hooping with your girl. You know, I dribble with her head. They be speaking down on my name, but in my face that shit is not the same. I pop out, let that 30 bang, you'll get left like a turning lane. Cush me. I'm drink Lucas and I sip walk. My pockets got beat up cause they got them knots. Run down your block, yeah, I brought out a mop. Turn on the news cause I put them on Fox. Bad little baby trying to give me that top. She like, Bon Loke, how you get all that guap? I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. I'm drink Lucas and I sip walk. My pockets got beat up cause they got them knots. Run down your block, yeah, I brought out a mop. Turn on the news. Cause I put them on Fox Bad little baby trying to give me that top She like Von Loke, how you get all that guap I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots I'm drink Lucas, all I do is pull up Turn your BM out, I made her go hoe up Stay down, little baby, and watch how you glow up Say money, talk with them blue hunters spoke up Too many Glocks in this party, if the ops they show up Then it's gonna go up It was a little nigga tripping, we hit him with shots Now his little ass can't grow up Park they whip as soon as they drove up Don't shoot from low range, yeah, I need a close up Drop a hundred shots wherever they post up no too close, you can't approach us, don't get too close, now you ain't know us, I got an XD, I slapped in the 30, ain't been 48 hours, that bitch is dirty, had to wet that boy up, he was acting too thirsty, I'm drink Lucas and I sip walk, my pockets got beat up cause they got them knots, run down your block, yeah I brought out a mop, turn on the news cause I put them on Fox, bad little baby trying to give me that top, she like Bob Loke, how you get all that guap, I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots, I'm like a Dalmatian, Got so many spots. I'm drink Lucas and I sip walk. My pockets got beat up cause they got them knots. Run down your block, yeah, I brought out a mop. Turn on the news cause I put them on Fox. Bad little baby trying to give me that top. She like Von Loke, how you get all that guap? I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. I'm like a Dalmatian, got so many spots. And we're back. Hot see what I see. Jones right here on Boom Service Radio. You know how I go. We got Bond Loke in the building. Bond Loco. Vegas representative. Yes, sir. Ski. West Side you know Rider. Yeah, you know I mean, y'all just watched Drop a Foe and Drank Locus. There you go, man, which is the project. You feel me? Make that me. out now on all platforms, Spotify. Music, Amazon, all that. All that. You feel me? 12 tracks on that thing, man. Check it out. Give them a review. Tap in with them. Let them know what it do. Yes, sir. Let me know what it is, please. Follow them on Instagram. That's B-O-N underscore L-O-C-C. L-O-C-O. Oh, Loco. That's right. Okay. V-O-N underscore L-O-C-O. Follow them on Instagram. And also, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Yes, sir. Cushman Music is the YouTube channel. There you go. Yes, what I mean, a um, couple more questions, man, before we up out of here, right? Yes, sir. What do you think about the gang culture in Las Vegas? And is it conducive to the hip-hop music scene? 
Barry. Barry. I uh so the gang culture plays a big part in the hip hop music scene because majority of the top artists in the city is gang bang. Mm-hmm. So or members. Or yep, definitely members. Probably retired or whatever, yeah. whatever the case may be, but motherfuckers from the city know like yeah, go you see some shit yeah. type shit. So yeah. yeah, I think it do plays a big part into the music and into the fact that like I said, people can't be in the same place. Mm-hmm. All of that type shit. So it just all boils down to you just growing up and then just seeing that uh, you can't do both. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you can't have them in the music because then, you, then your show's going to get stopped and you ain't going to be able to do shows, you know, your videos. And the fucking police going to be there all the time. So it's just, that's that's why you got to watch what you put out in the universe because it's all going to come back. Okay. I like that answer, right? Um. In reality, I think it is okay to finally separate the two mm-hmm. and rap. Yes, sir. And if you're going to entertain. I agree. I agree. Right? If you're going to entertain, entertain. Mm-hmm. But don't be living what you're rapping about no more. Yeah, because you, know you can't. You can't. Right? Because you're going to jail. And it's okay to entertain. It's okay to entertain. Right? For sure, for sure. Also, it's okay to rap about what you used to do, mm-hmm. right? As long as you ain't, you know, stupid enough to literally <laughs> put yourself in the bar where they can use your lyrics against you. Yeah, because they really doing that shit now. And just the simple fact that they doing it in all those other places, everybody else just going to pick up. Right. They just going to pick up that all shit. If they could use that in court, I'm pretty sure we could use this against them in court. Type shit in a whole other city. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, this ain't one of my questions, but what do you think about the YSL case? That shit is uh, that shit is deeper than rap. <laughs> that shit is deeper than rap for sure, for sure. And I do think the rap lyric shit is uh, is like they they fucking reaching. It should be admissible, definitely because I know goddamn well they just getting in there saying what the fuck ever. Mm-hmm. You feel me? They not you know what I'm saying literally. They just saying what rhymes type shit, niggas. Like they already own, mm-hmm. so they're not sitting there writing. You feel mm-hmm. me? Trying to think, they just getting in there, love and saying whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they just using that shit. So, I don't know. That shit is crazy. That the nigga Lucci mama got shot in the cuz saying that shit. Is, <laughs> that's. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I'm like, bro, been tripping lately. That was a little. You feel me? That was a little deep, but if the rap would have been separated from the music, that shit would have happened as far as him being right. So. Um, let's let everybody know where Von Loke from. Where you from? Uh, like born and raised, Las Vegas, Nevada. Born and raised on the west side. Okay, what 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 is the west side to you? The west side to me. The west side to me, home, home. You put me first off, and like shit, all the bad shit everybody really saying. I don't know, because <laughs> me coming up as a kid, it was cool. Mm-hmm. You know? Walk the do a little, you feel me? Everything was straight. It's just like as you got older, of course, you started to see yeah. more. But yeah. West Side ain't a bad place, especially how they building all that shit over there now. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's turning more into a little bit, yeah, a little half ass stuff. Mm, got you. So you a Lake Mead and MLK carry MLK baby type thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I stayed in Winslow Park, but mm. I'm not from. I'm from West Side, <laughs> I got homies from Winslow Park. Don't get me wrong, you feel me? You know, so I stayed over there. You feel me? Grew mm-hmm. up over there, but mm-hmm. I made my way across the street. How old were you? Sixth grade. Wow, sixth grade. That's when everybody got the saying where they was from. Deep. Everybody got the shoes yeah. and shit. You feel me? Yeah. Fresh out of uh, yeah, was, uh, fresh out of fifth grade. Wow. Yeah, you only left Gilbert. Did you ever get a, a part of the clicks? Heavy. That's how. <laughs> that's how I uh, got cool with the landlord. Okay. That's when it was cool. Okay. What did you think about that? Even today, what do you think about? You know, a set, and then a click, and then so many people from different sets are part of one click. Now, if you would have asked me this ten years ago, <laughs> okay. Now, 10 years ago, 
ain't nothing wrong with it. It's the click. Yep. You feel me? Everybody, nigga, these the bros. Yeah. But now that I'm older and I done seen so many different type of situations, yeah. that shit just nah. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's not. Like, I don't know how that's, it just don't. I don't know how the fuck I was there. But it just don't mix because if, like, you from this gang and he from this gang, he want to kill your homie from this gang. Mm-hmm. Y'all hanging out together. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's just not going to work because cause he might think some back door shit going on. Mm-hmm. He might think some back door shit going on. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just not a comfortable situation. Well, one is because our, we the 80s baby. So our big homie, then really put us on. Let me say that. Because mm-hmm. I was part of a clique. Mm-hmm. And a gang. Right? Mm-hmm. And what that means is, Vaughn, we became cool with quote unquote ops. Mm-hmm. Right? But because they the homies and they not our ops right now, we go to school together. Yeah. You feel me? But guess what? Vaughn, you know, was raised in Winslow Park or whatever, but made his way across the street, right? But then, guess what? He got homies from Garcia. Because we're not beefing in sixth and seventh grade yet. No. You feel me? Yeah. But then, once the homies start, and he, you feel me? Then it becomes an issue because the homie from your neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So, it was just, we was friends, bro. And we was friends even as quote-unquote gang members, right? But we was gang members. Yeah. And so we ended up making a click. Hell yeah. For ourselves. Yeah, because we both gang members. Yes. And but the big homies ain't telling us you can't be with him, bro. Don't do that. Even though that's you know, but don't do that, right? Mm-hmm. And even if they was, we were so hard headed. Motherfuckers wouldn't listen. No. And then look at the generation under us. They really don't listen. They Man. really don't care. So we're a product of that environment, and then they become a product of our environment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's why today we got to try to help them. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Even if they're not listening. At least try to do your part so you can say, man, I tried. You know what I mean? Like, you can say, I did all I could do, and this is what I did. And when you do that, well, you did, bro. Yeah. You ain't lying. And they told me you did, Vaughn. They told me you was blah, 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 blah. So you can have a clear conscience. Because if we don't do nothing, sometimes that blood on your hand. Yeah. Am I lying to you today? No, sir. Hmm. So I get it, man. But thank you for saying the difference. Like, man, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, <laughs> first today, yeah, yeah it's, it's not conducive. But at the end of the day, I like your answer to, you know, uh, Vegas and the gang culture and the music culture. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, yes, we got it. Yes, it's here. And no, you don't have to do the same thing at the same time. Yes, right. you should try to choose music. Represent what you represent. Nigga, make it about the music. Hell because yeah. we're trying to get up out of here. Right. You feel me? And gang culture is in hip-hop in general. Mm-hmm. Period. You know what I mean? Yes, it's sir. in hip-hop in general. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Um, were you in a two-parent household growing up? No. Who no. was it? Moms or dad? Uh, mom. Mom. Yes, sir. And you got siblings? Just y'all too? Yep. Okay. Um, what is something that moms embedded in you growing up, right? Mm-hmm. Like morally, that still sticks with Von Lok today? If you're not going to go to school, you're going to get a job. <laughs> and, when, and when you get out of school, you got to keep a job. Mm-hmm. Or you're not going to be able to survive. Or, or that's not what you're not going to be able to survive. Yeah. Like you have to. That makes some money. And that's why like, I never went without a job. Like, if I was going like, to quit or get fired or something, I have to have a job. Back. Or, Isn't it? or, like, if I didn't have a job, I have to be doing something to where I'm getting more or the same amount of the job. I'm mm-hmm. going to go get a job. Mm-hmm. Like, she just always said, but like, that's why I don't be understand how I be seeing people that I went to school with, like, y'all smokers. Mm-hmm. Well, like, what did y'all mama tell y'all? She didn't tell y'all that you have to work forever after school? <laughs> that was, the, like, I don't understand. Cause my mama definitely told me you got to go to work, yeah. and then you got to work forever. Yeah. And then you retire. Yeah. That's the plan. I ain't going to lie. 
like I've heard a lot of things that people that that parents told their kids. That's one of the realest things I've heard. Yeah. And even though it's a cycle, right? Work, 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 retire, whatever. But what your mom was telling you is you gotta have some money, honey. Yes, basically. You gotta make some basically. money. Basically. You feel me? Yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta have you a source of income. Yes. Like you feel you, me? you're not gonna be able to survive in this world without a source of income. Yes. And then, like you said, either I gotta find something that's making more than what I was making, or I just go go get back and get a job. For real, for real. I rock with that, man. Uh, you got kids? Two girls. How old are they? Uh, she's my oldest. She's sixteen. My youngest is twelve. Okay. So what are you teaching those teenagers almost? She's almost a teenager and you got yeah. one. What are you teaching those? The same. It's, it's really the same thing that my mama taught me as far as the work ethic. Like my daughter, she already works at uh, Nothing But Cake. 16. Yes, yes. So, so yeah, she's working. And, um, so my youngest, she's trying to work. But, you know. Yeah, 12. Yeah, yeah. So she's she going to hustle. Yeah, she's going to hustle. And I just be trying to Teach them that, like, that energy you put in the world, you're going to get it back. Get it back. You reap what you sow. Man, because even if negative or positive, whatever you put out there, it's going to come back. For sure. Yeah. One of my last questions, man, uh, what are you teaching the little homies out there? You know, because obviously you're affiliated. You, mm -hmm. you, know, you share that with the world in your music, right? What are you teaching the little homies, though? Outside of music, right? What are you teaching the little homies out there? Financial stability. Mm. Like, you got to save your bread, though. Like, you got to just take a year off from everything mm. and just say, mm. that's the only way you're going to be able to achieve what you want to achieve. Wow. Like, because slow and steady, I mean, it might be slow, but it's going to win the race. Mm. You, feel me? you just got to really save your bread and have that cushion to where when you want to do something, you ain't even going to feel it because you saved it. Yeah. And you just saved all this time. Then you get, I mean, it might take some people two months Six months, it might take some people a whole year. As mm -hmm. long as you set that goal for yourself and you get to it at the end, then you can ball out. Because if you really think about it, bro, 12 months ain't nothing but 52 weeks. For real, for real. Right? Because mm -hmm. I stayed down. I, I had the same two pair of basketball shorts and the same two pair of jeans for the whole year. Wow. I was like, I'm not spite. Every time I got 500, I put it up. Wow. Because I was like, I ain't going to be able to do what I want to do. I wouldn't be able to go get this chain if I'm just keep on spinning and spinning and spinning. I got to have a cushion. Yeah. And then, then when that shit was over, I went jean crazy. I went in that motherfucker, give me these, these, yeah. these, 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 these. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, you feel me? It's just like, it just goes back to you got to set that blueprint for yourself mm -hmm. and stick to it and follow it to the end. Are they following you? Are they listening to you? You know how it be. I do, but okay, give, uh, okay, give me are, how many? How many listening to to to, to Von Lowe? For sure, for sure, it's a good handful. But they little man they sell, so you yeah. feel me? They got their own mind. You okay, everybody got their own. You feel me? Like, you, like just like you said, all you could do is tell them. Yep. You feel me? Plant that seed. If they yep. run with it, they do. But yep. I mean, you know, you told them the right thing. Yes, you can lead them to water, but can't make them drink. Yes, sir. Man, but that's cool to hear a handful. Mm hmm. Cause it's a lot. Even when you look at hood day pictures, bro, it's a lot. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. All right, man. Anything you want to tell the people before we get up out of here, man? How I see what I see Jones, man. Man, just tap into that Kush man lifestyle on the way. Drink Lucas out right now. You feel me? It's a whole bunch of visuals, whole bunch of music, everything coming. You feel me? Just stay tapped in with your boy. We're gonna keep working and keep trying to put this city on. You feel me? One more time, where to follow you at? Hey. B O N with the underscore L O C O Von Loco on Instagram. YouTube. Cushman Music. All you gotta do is type in Cushman Music. I'm popping right up. Cush with a K. Yes, sir. U S H. Yes, sir. M A N. Is music spelled correctly? Yes, sir. M U S I C. Definitely, man. And I like this double entendre, man. Cushman Music, but also Cushion. Man, music, man. You got a good <laughs> You did yes, me. Listen, I see what I see, Jones, man. You know we in the building, man. Welcome. Welcome to the fall, man. We right yes, here sir. in 2022. Yes, sir. We cracking the fall off right, man. You feel me? This is my first episode, my first show, man. Von Loke, man. Great energy, man. Yes, sir. You feel me? Great special guest to have, bro. And I just appreciate the knowledge he bringing, man, and the answers he had today was amazing. 
and all y'all, man, listen to what he said. You could take one year off, save. Mm-hmm. This man had two pair of what? Two pair of basketball, basketball shorts, two shorts. pair of jeans the two whole pair of jeans year. The whole year. And then he was able to go buy whatever jeans he wanted after that. Yes, Put sir. up 500 every time he made it. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know what I'm saying? This is good info, baby. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So we up out of here, man. Hot with Icy Jones on Room Service Radio. You know how I go. If you want to get with me, man, tap in. Hot with Icy Jones on Instagram. Hot Seat with Icy Jones on YouTube and Facebook. Hot Seat with Icy Jones. I'm in the building. And you can get with me personally. I-C-J-O-N-E-Z. Let me know if you want to get down, get an interview. You want to feature, you want me to be at your show, you want me to host it, you want me to consult you, whatever you want me to do, man, get at me. Let's go. I'm about to here. Good night. Peace.